Hey guys, what's going on? Blazing Grill Works and M Grills, and today we're gonna do some wonderful prime steaks on our Blazing Grill Works. So um, we're gonna use the direct sear option, and let's just get to it. I got three beautiful prime ribeyes right here. You can see the marbling on them, just amazing. A uh, very good cut of beef. Always like to start off with a good cut. And um, we're gonna do a quick trim. The only thing when I do trim these up for home, I'm just gonna take this big fat area. I'm gonna do a quick trim. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of that fat. But remove a good portion of it. But then I do like to go around the steaks and just kind of trim off anything that's just hanging off. Basically it's just kind of like squaring up the steak. So just something like that. Very simple, very quick. Just cut a little bit of that fat off on the sides. That's it. We'll do that with all three. Now for seasoning, I do like to use a quick little binder. So something like um, an olive oil works really well. If you got some um, Worcestershire sauce, works very well as well. In this case, I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil on each one. I'm gonna rub this around. Just takes a little bit, and all we're gonna do is using this to get our seasonings to stick. Now when it comes to steaks like this, you could use just plain salt and pepper, some garlic, whatever. Um, there's many products out there. You know, just use your favorite steak seasoning. There's just a bunch. Um, I mean, today for this one, I got some hotty toddy here. Um, and I like to layer my steaks, so I'm gonna put a little, put a good coating. I do, since these steaks are very thick, do you like to get it on the sides? Pack that in. Then if you like, you could do some seasoning layering, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm using a different season now. One last season. After you season your steaks, it's always good, let them sit out. Let them sit out room temperature. Uh, what we wanna see is a steak to kind of start sweating a little bit. Um, so right now these steaks are cold. We want them to get more room temperature. So we're just gonna leave them out and let them sweat. We'll check back here in a few minutes. Something I highly recommend is picking up one of these instant read thermometers. Um, you can see our outside temperature right now, ambient temperature is about 70 degrees in the house. So what I want to do is get these steaks 70 degrees or as close as possible before I put them on the grill. So right now if I check it, I am at 45 degrees. So these are still cold. I want them to sit out a little bit longer. Um, it's going to make for a little bit more of a tender steak and it's going to cook a little bit better. 
So let's just leave these out, let them sweat a little bit, and go fire up the grill. So here we are at the Blazing Grill Works. This is the gridiron. What I'm gonna do is over here hanging on my hooks, I have our stainless steel grate removing tools. I'm going to remove this stainless steel grate and just sit it over to the side. I love these stainless steel grill tools just for making everything so easy. Then we're gonna take our tool that comes with the direct searing option and we're gonna remove our center plate and just put that to the side. That's gonna expose the heat right in the center for the direct grilling. Now I'm gonna put my grate right back over here. Then we're gonna take our grill grate panels that comes with the kit and we're gonna set that right on top. So if you set them right on top of your grates, they pretty much do, for the most part, they lock in. Um, put them right on the center, you're gonna have your hot zone here. We're gonna fire up the grill. What we're looking for is about 530 to 600. That's gonna be our range that we wanna cook with. And a good way to check that is by using one of these um, instant read IR thermometers. So we'll be able just to point it right on top of the grates. We want to be on the, the tall sides. We want to be right about that 500, uh, you know, 550, 600. You know, right now the grill's not on, so they're cold, but that's what we're looking for. So let's turn this baby on and get to it. Since I'm just using these for the, for the first time, I am going to put some Pam. I'm just going to spray it. Quick coating on that. Another tool I'm going to use is our stainless steel steak press from M Grills. And what we're going to do when we use the press is we're not going to press the steak. We're going to let the steak press sit on it just for a few seconds and then take it off. And the only thing that does is make sure the steak, when it's on the grill grates, it stays flat and it gets a good char mark at the very end of the steak. Sometimes a steak, if you cook it, they can have a, ten a tendency to curl up and you don't get a good sear from edge to edge. That's what this is used for. So you don't ever press your steak. You just set it on top and only for about 15 seconds and you take it off, that's it. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And let's crank it up. To start off at about 450. Another thing I like to do is I'll take a stick of butter and I put some barbecue seasoning on top of it just like what I season the steaks with and I'm going to set this off the way from the direct heat into the smoker and let this melt while I'm cooking. Uh, when you do butter your steaks, don't butter your steaks before you grill them or while you're, you're basically searing them. All you're going to do is burn your butter. Uh, and it will give a little bit of a funky taste, so don't do that. You baste your steaks with butter as they're coming up the temperature when they're resting. Okay, let's check the temperature of our grill grate panels. You can see right here, 720. That's too hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this temperature. I'll lower the temperature right at 290. Much better. We're about 600, uh, 605, 600. Now we get a little bit cooler as we come over, which is perfect. So we could use this whole range here to cook on. That's awesome. First, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put my butter inside. Just way off to the side. So we're going to have our first beautiful ribeye. First thing we're going to do, I'm just going to put it on vertically, just like this. Put our steak press on it. And we're looking for about eh, maybe two minutes.
flip it, the same thing. And of course you could do more steaks at once. You don't have to do just one at a time. After I do this first steak, just to show you, I'll do both steaks together. see here we do have a beautiful steak but it's not done right now we're going to check our internal temperature we're going to be really cold yep we're only at 70 so we're only at 76 degrees so our steak is still cold so what i'm going to do is just put it off of the fire and let it just slowly cook and get up the temperature butter. steaks on the side a little bit more level with the exhaust rack over here what that's going to do is that's really going to help with the color of the steaks as the smoke flows over the steak as it exits the, uh, the smoker um, and overall just help us get our temperatures up to where the steak is perfectly done I'm looking to cook a perfect medium steak so I'm looking at about 127 or so got a ways to go they're about about a 100 so at about 127 is when we're going to pull these off and then let them rest we are done okay now that we're 
they're never going to take off the stakes. So just put them in the pan. Oh, they smell so good. So now we're back inside. What you do not want to do is cut open your steaks right now. You want to let them rest before you cut your steaks. Let them rest for a few minutes, um, about 10 minutes, and then dig in.